In this video, I'd like to share with you five tips that might be useful if you are considering going on PNO's Iona and taking the Norwegian Fjords tour. We went there for seven nights back in June and here are five tips that we picked up during our cruise. The first tip that I'd like to share with you is that you don't have to actually pay for any excursions to have a great time. This was our first cruise and before we went there were numerous emails from PO encouraging us to book excursions and we kind of had a bit of FOMO going on. So we actually docked at three ports and during all three ports we only actually paid for one excursion which I'll get onto in just a minute. Our first stop was actually cancelled so the first port where we could actually leave the boat was in Oldham and as soon as we got off the boat there was opportunities to go on tour buses and things like that but because we'd had this extra sea day we were just keen to walk and see what we could find. Once you get off the ship there's about a 30 minute walk to Lake Flown I think it's called I'll put the name on screen just in case I'm not pronouncing that correctly and when you walk into this lake there's some beautiful Norwegian houses that you can see on the way there's obviously all the hills the clouds sometimes you can see the snow in the mountains and there's a beautiful old little church that you will see if you're going in the right direction of the lake so there is an opportunity to go on a hop on hop off bus once you get off the ship but there are two things with that the first one is that you've got to pay for it and the second one is that you could actually miss out on some of those wonderful little sites that i just mentioned before another problem is that once you're on those kind of buses they basically only stop for a minute or two so if you actually want to walk around the lake or anything like that you're obviously restricted versus just walking there. Plus, on the walk back, we saw this really cool grass cutter, this automatic grass cutter that I've never seen in the UK before, and these beautiful waterfalls. So we went back on the ship for some lunch and we had all intentions of going out for a hike or something like that because there's some great hikes as soon as you get off Iona as well, but we were just too tired and didn't leave the ship, I don't think, until the next port. The second tip that I'd like to share with you in regards to this Norwegian tour is to check the excursions that you want to do once you get on land. So one of our stops was a beautiful place called Flam. This was not somewhere that we intended to go, but we're very glad that we did. So if you're looking at booking the uh, scenic train ride there in Flam, if you book that through p and website or the app that you get when you're on board, I think that costs about £100 per person. There'll be a screenshot of that that comes up now. But if you get off the ship, it's less than a mile walk to the actual train station. All the people that work there speak wonderful English and I think we paid about 40 or 50 pounds each for our tickets instead of 100 pounds and it's the exact same ride all you have to do is get off the cruise and walk less than a mile to do that and you're going to save 40 or 50 pounds so always do that there's numerous excursions that you can get maybe up to half price as soon as you get off the ship as well and of course anybody that's been on a few cruise ships will know that the places or the destinations are not always guaranteed I mean you do get a refund from the cruise ship companies. But in my opinion, we just like to kind of play it by ear, get off the ship and see what we can find rather than book through Pino. The next three tips are dedicated to Iona itself. These are things that you can do while on board that I didn't really know and we just kind of discovered a few of these haphazardly. So the first is that you can actually order custom meals. So if you've never been on a cruise ship before, some of these portions can appear quite small. So if you want to get a few extra slices of toast or some extra avocado at breakfast or an extra egg or anything like that, all the staff are very accommodating and very helpful and they'll usually do whatever request you have. If you go into one of the sit down restaurant type places, all the staff are usually extremely friendly and helpful. The next tip is to photograph the newsletter. So every single day you get a newsletter or a program left outside your cabin. And this tells you what's going on throughout the ships, things like comedians, bands, all kinds of entertainments and activities. This program, at least on Iona, is absolutely loaded and it's hard to remember all of it with all the times and all the stuff that's going on. So if you're going out for the evening, just grab your phone, take a quick photo. Then if you're planning going to get some dinner, then you're going to go and see a comedian and see a band. You can do that right there rather than have to carry the entire program around with you. The last tip is that you can actually bring your own food and drink on board. Now, you cannot bring your own alcohol. That is forbidden by p and so don't do that. But you can bring your own soft drinks and you can bring your own snacks to have in the cabin. Now, don't get me wrong. p and Iona has an abundance of great food that's constantly available. Amazing restaurants, great food. But if you're just in your room and you want some crisps or you want some pretzels or you want a chocolate bar or something like that, there is a fridge in your room. So if you want to bring a few chocolate bars to have while you're in the fridge, that's fine. Or if you want to bring some Diet Cokes or some visit drinks that you can stock up in the fridge. So those are our five tips regarding our Norwegian Cruise Tour. Please let me know if I've missed any in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.